Okay, well, thank you. Thank you to everyone in the room here and uh, to those of you being online. Um, yeah, we are Nick and Louise. <laughs> I'm Louise, I'm the um, EDA manager from the LMB and Nick is race equality lead from um, also working with me at the LMB, but race equality lead for the Medical Research Council. And we're gonna tell you today about the work that the MRC is doing um, about uh, race equality and also about what the LMB is doing, particularly through our Rising Talent Fellowship and how that all works. We are being recorded, so just so you bear that in mind. And there'll be time at the end for questions and for those in the room, some refreshments as well. Um, so if you've got any questions for those online, put them in the chat box or in the Q, we've got a Q&A box and then we can answer them at the end. So I think that's all I've got to start off with. I'll hand over to Nick, who will tell you a bit about the MRC. Thank you, okay. So I think it's important that we start off by talking about who exactly is MRC and what is UKRI. So UKRI or UK Research and Innovation works with the government to invest over seven billion pounds a year in research innovation uh, by partnering with academia and industry. Now, MRC falls within, as shown by this lovely diagram, falls within the nine councils of UKRI. Um, UKRI is committed to EDI, as it says, equality, diversity, and inclusion is central to UKRI's vision to create a research and innovation system that is for everyone and by everyone. So it is within their core values. Um, and this commitment includes race equality um, for all within research. And if you'd like to know more just about UKRI's um, general uh, EDI commitments, then you can check out their strategy and action plan and the workforce EDI plan. Now, let's move on to MRC. So the Medical Research Council's mission is to improve human health through world-class medical research. And of course, EDI is a priority for MRC. The Medical Research Council outlines six main objectives in their strategic strategy, which um, aligns with UKRI's uh, strategic goals. Um, but there are two in particular which focus on race equity. The first one is to support the breadth and diversity of skilled people needed for the future research and development workforce. And that includes things such as investing close to 80 million pounds per annum through fellowships, uh, panels and other supports um, and developing um, uh, pilot and interventions to promote diversity across career stages um, and job roles, which includes a black internship uh, program through Health Data UK. And the second objective is to strengthen equality, diversity and inclusion uh, to enable talented people to thrive. Um, and this includes things such as developing positive action initiatives uh, to increase representation, applications from underrepresented groups um, and participation from said groups, um, as well as like rolling out and evaluating the active bystander scheme pilot uh, within MLC boards and panels. So this is a general overview of the EDI initiatives that MRC has been working on, but specifically for race equality, I'd like to focus on um, uh, the boards and panels and stuff that we've been doing. So uh, the scheme for boards and panels has officially been launched, which is really, really exciting. Um, for the board observer scheme, um, it provides researchers transitioning into independence uh, the opportunity to absorb, observe MRC boards and panels, and it prioritizes places for underrepresented groups. Um, and in terms of boards and panel association scheme, the board and panel association scheme will provide individuals from underrepresented groups the opportunity um, to gain experience in peer review um, and serve on an MRC funding board or panel. Um, and this will include minority ethnic groups um, and also benefit from a mentorship um, 
as part of their two-year program. I've also done stuff such as uh, invitations to prominent black scientists to present in MRC seminar series, uh, financial support for BB STEM's bridge mentoring scheme, and also internships offered through summer diversity internship programs and the 10,000 black interns. So now let's move on to this project, Black in Biomedical Research. Um, the Black in Biomedical Research project basically came about in response to the sustained underrepresentation of uh, scientists or researchers from Black heritage backgrounds across MRC, but also within the biomedical sector. Um, and I'm now the project manager for this initiative. So if you do have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them. So these are some of the actions of the research group. So of course, an advisory group for the project and to recruit a project manager, which is me, amazing. Um, a biomedical conference for minoritized scientists this is something that we're doing in collaboration with Applied Microbiology International, very, very exciting stuff. Um, the 10,000 Black Scientist Project, which looks at celebrating UK um, globally, actually, global black scientists. Um, funding to support black fellows through existing targeted partner schemes and networks. Um, so, ex example, the Sanger Excellence Fellowship, and also developing additional schemes, which we will talk about a bit later on. Um, uh, utilizing the 10,000 Black Interns Program um, and funding for outreach organizations focused on pre-university students. Um, we're trying to make sure that we um, cover all areas of the career pathway. And so by looking at pre-university, they're just as important as the rest that we are looking at. Um, other actions include funding pilot conference and summer lab internships for Black students, uh, working partner with LMB to develop the Rising Talent Fellowship, which is Louise will be talking about a bit um, later on, and opportunities um, for Black researchers to absorb, observe MRC boards and panels and game reveal experience, which I spoke about a bit earlier in terms of the scheme that has just launched. Um, also, just to say, in terms of the pilot conference and summer lab internships for Black students, um, this was founded by one of our advisory group members, Dr. Bernadine Adiwu, which you can see in this um, in, in that photo just there, um, launching of uh, changing the story for Black biomedical scientists and um, another conference that she also has. Um, I think this is taking place on the 20th of March, Cambridge University, no, Department of Chemistry. Yes. So um, if this, yes, uh, we will send details around in case uh, you would like to attend. So now we are going to look at um, the data. This is MRC data um, from 2015, 16 to 2019, 20 in terms of the academic year. And it shows fellow applications, so postdoctoral applications and award rates for by ethnic group. Now, if you look very carefully on the graph, we can see that there were 2% of applications made, or as it says, 30 um, applications made by black individuals compared to, uh, let's say, 18% of Asian applicants or 5% of from mixed heritage. And similar proportions of those applying were awarded fellowships apart from black heritage. Um, I will try and just move this so you can see there actually isn't um, in within, you cannot see um, any black uh, individuals who were awarded fellowships within that time or um, because of data restrictions, you're not able to actually see that number. And now moving on to MRC principal investigator applications and award rates, it kind of shows a similar story um, in that similar proportions of those applying were awarded um, were awarded um, apart from black heritage scientists. We've got 1% of um, PI applications were of black heritage um, compared to 11% of awards went to Asian applicants when 12% applied. So there is a trend here from um, fellows and PIs. 
So these articles here show um, that this issue is systemic. There are systemic barriers to research. Um, there's research showing that black scientists are less likely to hold professor posts or that black postgraduates are more likely to drop out um, of studying um, science. As you can see on one of the stats, we can see 3.5% um, of black scientists hold a professor post. Um, I believe this has gone up um, by not much. It might be zero point something in the past year. Um, so it is showing an increase, but there is still more to be done. Um, this is why positive action initiatives like the one that we are doing um, are being creative to created to improve the barriers in academia. Now, across the sector, we can see a plethora of initiatives coming from um, across the UK and even particular fellowships, such as the Welcome Sanger Institute Excellence Fellowship or the Royal Society Career Development Fellowship. And you've also got different initiatives and organizations um, being founded um, across the career pathway, such as Black in Cancer, Black British Academics, Black Women in Science Network, um, and research or funders such as ourselves who are also trying to do initiatives. Now I'm going to pass over to Louise to talk more about the Rising Campus Fellowship. Thank you. So yeah, there's lots going on across, and there's the one one that we um, missed off the slide was in the Wellcome Trust Accelerator Award, which um, I meant to add to that slide. There's, lots of initiatives going on across across the board so we're very pleased to be joining that crowd <laughs> at the LMB so before I, before I start talking about the um, Rising Talent Fellowship um, if you don't know much about the LMB uh, we're the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology and we're a renowned research laboratory dedicated to understanding important biological processes at the molecular level with a goal of using this knowledge to tackle major problems on human health and disease. We are situated on the Cambridge Biomedical Campus up near Addenbrooke's in a state-of-the-art building which has been specifically designed to produce to provide the right environment in which innovative medical research, translation and collaboration can flourish. And it is an amazing building, I'd say. Um, however, as we've as we've heard, we are we have not escaped this issue. Um, we are looking to diversify our scientific community, and we've got a number of um, initiatives we're working on. But the one that we um, are really pleased to to be working on right now is is our Rising Talent Fellowship for Black Heritage Scientists. Um, a bit of background before we sort of tell you all about it. But this is, we did a bit of data analysis of our own. Um, we currently um, have 6% um, from our staff and student um, demographic um, disclosing as a racially minoritized group and 0.5% disclose as from black heritage. So we have got some big gaps to fill and um, this is this is part of what we're what we're working on at the moment. So overall, our objectives at the LMB are to raise awareness about issues to do with race equality through events and talks and resources. We also um, devise a inclusive recruitment and onboarding process, which we're sort of launched in the middle of last year and, and we're still working on at the moment, and um, trying to represent different groups in our physical spaces um, so that. We, we can yeah raise a profile of all the all the different types of people that work here, and then the sort of big thing that we wanted to really follow in the footsteps of the Sanger Excellence um, Fellowship scheme is to create our own version. So we um, in February launched a new postdoc fellowship scheme for Black Heritage scientists, and um, it's not only to um, sort of provide opportunities for Black scientists, but also we want there's a vicious cycle that you, you, you can't see can't be what you can't see so we want to provide some um, inspiration and uh, for future generations as well so it's all part of trying to really um, yeah get more black heritage scientists to continue with science 
So if you haven't read or read about it, it's uh, on our web page. There's a link straight from the home page, the LMB home page. And um, I will talk through the specifics of the scheme now. So we have committed to um, uh, recruiting two fellowships per year through this scheme. And these are extra to our other um, postdoc positions. So this is um, a really brilliant opportunity for people to come take advantage of. Um, we are looking for early career researchers in the looking for the first or second postdoc position, but we are really flexible with this. So if there are other circumstances of people who've been out of science for a while and want to re-enter them, we're, we're more than happy to, to um, consider those applications from those people as well. It's a, um, a three-year career development position and there's a possibility for extension after that, as with all of our postdoc positions. <coughs> and there's generous benefits and training allowance, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, yeah, so el eligibility for the scheme is, um, must be black heritage, self-identify as black heritage, and that includes mixed heritage. Um, other than that, we, uh, we want to sort of uh, encourage those from, uh, who studied in the UK or um, are from the UK, but um, yes, so those who have studied in the UK and those who have not studied in the UK, but are from the UK um, are eligible. So. If you if that if you fit that criteria, then please apply. So um, because because we're MRC funded, we we can't offer the the best salary, but there are lots of benefits to, to working at the LMB. Um, there is a, a up to five thousand um, pounds training allowance over the three years as part of this scheme. All research consumables are Sort of extra that's, that's, that's all comes comes with um we have an excellent pension package which is 16 percent employer contribution which is which is very generous and 30 days of leave per year with an additional 10 and a half days paid bank holidays and privileged days we are um, so other benefits there's um options for flexible working um, we have a free assistance program, which includes um, confidential help and advice, counselling service, and lots of discounts and things like that. There's a cycle to work scheme. There's also options for loans for things like rent deposits, season ticket if, you, if you're travelling by train, things like that. And we can offer guidance on relocation as well. So we understand that can often be a barrier um, to be able to live and work near Cambridge. So the premise of this scheme is to really try and break down some of the barriers that people might um, sort of feel that, um, about, about coming to somewhere like the LMB. We want um, people, to, if they want to talk about the application and the process, to phone us or come meet us. We want to make sure that you feel comfortable and happy with what the process is going to be and what you have to do to apply. Um, and that is from start to finish of the application process. And none of those co conversations will um, be part of the assessment of your application at all. So please get in touch if you want to talk about it. Um, there's a buddy system for when people join. So um, lots, lots of peer mentoring, um, just making sure people are feeling looked after when they join. There is an extensive training development program, which um, you can get involved with. Um, Mentoring, we're, we're providing a specialised mentoring programme for, for the um, fellows that join through this scheme. We are also providing one-to-one -one coaching if where, where that's required. And we're also setting up um, uh, ways to network with other fellows who are sort of joining schemes like this across other organisations, from other organisations. So that with the aim to build a network and a peer group so that we provide support for each other. So how to apply. So we've got the timeline across the top there. So with the, the applications opened um, early February and they close at the end of March. Um, so we're about to do another promotional push. If you think anybody would like to know about it, then please 
send it, send it on, send it out, and let everybody know. Um, by the end, by during April, we'll be shortlisting and um, interviews in May. Um, what we've brought in for uh, this scheme is you can apply using a traditional scientific CV if that's what you wish to do, or if you'd prefer to use a narrative CV, then this can also be used. And the difference is that with a narrative CV, it's um, more like a, a detailed covering letter um, that you might attach to your traditional CV um, during the application. We've, um, if you look on the website, we've, there's some really detailed um, information about what to include, guidance on what to include in your traditional CV and in your narrative CV, so that you can make sure that as much information comes out as possible. The benefit of narrative CV is as if there's any gaps or issues that you've encountered um, along, along the way so far, that gives you the opportunity to explain that and to you know, put that into context. And that really helps us to understand where there might be sort of anomalies or gaps, things like that. Um, yes, give us that, give us as much information as you can. Um, that's what we that's what we really like to see. Um, yeah, so candidates will during an interview process, candidates will be asked to um, do a short presentation, which we ask people to tell us about their research journey to date, key areas of discovery, and areas of future interest. We're looking for your passion for the subject, your motivations and your competencies. And that will come through the sort of question and answer session towards the end of that interview process. Um, if you're able to, uh, that those interviews can take place in person or online. Um, and if you're visiting in person, we can do a tour of the building. If you're applying, um, I would like a tour of the building, then let us know and we can take you on a tour of the building whenever. Um, we're more than happy to do that. I want people to come and see what, what a brilliant environment we've got to work in. Um, if you are unsuccessful in your application, we have committed to providing um, detailed feedback for those shortlisted candidates um, so that they've got an opportunity to build on, on that application and try again in the future or to use that for, for other applications that you're making to other institutions. We just want to make it as a positive experience as possible and, and a learning one, even if you're unsuccessful. And for those who are successful, um, with terms of start dates, we've on, a, on the timeline here, we've put October to December um, as ideal start date. But again, we know that these things can be barriers for people to apply in the first place. So we're really open to extending that if that is something that needs to happen. So don't let that sort of deadline be a, a barrier to applying in the first place. So that is what I have to say about that. <laughs> Um, I think if there's anything else that you'd like to know or any questions you've got, then please either put them in the chat or any questions from the room. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. On the second point, <clears throat> went on to that one first. So the the time we it was every year. So we committed to every year until we 
we, our data shows that we don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> That's a current commitment. Um, obviously, we, we we're going to review that, but that is a current commitment just to run it every year. So next um, spring will be the same thing will happen again. Um, and in terms of timelines, we um, you can as long as you don't have to have completed your PhD. We have to be within six months. So, like, if you like, in six months' time, you can you'll be completing. You you'll you're fine to apply. Um, so yeah, that sounds like that would work fine if that's what you wanted to do. The first question. What was that again? Group leaders. That was a bit I missed out of my presentation. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Group leaders. So so yes. Yeah, so for this scheme, um, so we have a we have a scientific panel review panel. Um, so there's two ways you could do this. So if you already know which group leaders or areas that you're interested in, so at the LMB we have four scientific divisions. So it might be that you feel your science fits into one of those. But there might be specific groups within that that you feel you want to join or explore more. We'd encourage you to get in touch with those group leaders or get in touch with me or Nick, and we can point you in the right direction. Or we can get some advice from the scientists here at the LMB to say, okay, well, we think that would that would work well with that person or that person. And then you can speak to those group leaders directly, which tends to happen, tends to be the done thing anyway. Um, and that's really just to get a sense of, where, of whether you would, you would fit your, your science aligns well. Um, what was I going to say? Yes, if you don't know, yeah, if, you, if you're not sure, then again, come to us and we can help guide you on that. It could be, so depending on the sort of the circumstances of the group leader, it might be that they haven't got any space in their group at that point in time, but they might know that there would be space further in the future, or it might be that one group doesn't have space, but another group does, which would fit your science, and we can perhaps help guide with that. So if you do get in touch with any group leaders, just keep us in the loop and we can help help make sure that the the momentum is kept going and that you get the, get the information that you need um yeah other than that we can yeah we can help we can help sort of yeah as i said guide guide you to the right group leaders and areas of science so by that everything isn't it yes so yeah i think there's no um sort of developing of a project or anything like that but it might help you to sort of think well if i were to join this group what might my scientific aspirations be if that were the case and so that might help you kind of prepare for your interview should you get to that stage um and that yeah that sort of has a positive impact on yeah on the interview um panel any other questions anything from online Well, I think if that's the case, we will draw it to a close. Um, we've got this, this has been recorded, so we, we'll um, send this around so people can benefit from what we've talked about. There's a QR code on here, so if you want to scan that, then you go straight through to the, the, the uh, fellowship page and where all the information is, is there waiting for you. Otherwise, thank you, Nick, for your um, input and also to everyone joining online and to our audience here at Jesus College. Thank you very much. Thank you.